Are you like me, using the same tea bag five times because you're broke? Well, I guess if you close your eyes and think really hard about tea, hot water tastes just the same, right? Oh boy, we need to make some extra money fast. So let's go over some of my favorite side hustles that any photographer can do to make anywhere from $100 to $1,000 extra per month. And it doesn't matter if you're an amateur or a pro, anyone can do it. And I also tried all of these things myself. Now I'm not gonna tell you to get a second job or sell your house and go live somewhere like a hermit in the mountains. You can do all these things on the side while being a photographer. Don't get me wrong, these are not easy get rich strategies or anything like that. Some might even feel like a second job in the beginning because you have to put the work into it at least for a few weeks or months. After that they just become a passive income stream, you don't have to look at it anymore, just watch the cash flow in. Sort of. And other things require you to do the work whenever you need the money, but it's your schedule, your spare time, you decide. And finally, for a few of these things you need an online presence, but not for all. So I'm gonna start with the things that worked for me while I was traveling full time for two years. And I'm pretty sure that if it worked for me while I was traveling, it will work for most photographers. I'm also gonna add a few things that didn't work for me, but maybe that will work for you. And some things that I haven't tried, but I want to try because I think they have great potential. Wait, before we start, would you mind giving the thumbs up button just a tiny little click? Just, just a little one, really fast? Okay, thanks, I really appreciate it. It's a classic, I know, but try not to sell your prints through an online platform, there's a better way. You know, there's no reason for any photographer not to sell prints. I always try to convince beginning and advanced photographers to make prints, because that's where it starts. You can learn so much about photography and your work by printing it. You really can't compare a photo on a screen with a print, they're two totally different things. So if you're not printing your work already, then start right now and if you are, why not sell them? You already have the product laying around so it's easy to get started. Now don't get me wrong, to make that first sale, that's not easy. Making a good photo and a good print, that's the easy part, but there's marketing and promoting your work people need to know that your work is for sale. Now there's two ways to do it. First of all, there's the online platforms that do the shipping and the printing for you. That's how I did it while I was traveling because it was just impossible for me to print and ship the work myself. But it's not ideal and there's a better way. Try to find a printer to work with and then sell and ship the work yourself. You have a lot more control over the prints and it's also more personal and special. Buyers always prefer to buy from the artist and not through an online platform. So you can start with just prints and then later move on to framed prints. Now again that's the easy part because you're gonna have to let people know that your work is for sale on Instagram, Facebook, your website, your blog, everywhere. And don't mention it just once that your work is for sale, mention it a lot of times without being spammy. Currently my prints are priced from $50 to $200 depending on the size and I haven't tried framed prints yet, but I will give it a try. Now remember that selling a print is not something that happens every day, one or two a month is a good month. Most people know what affiliate marketing is, you add a link to your blog, your website or here on YouTube and then when someone buys the product by clicking on your link you earn a small percentage without the buyer having to pay more. Seems simple enough right? But you have to put some work into it. I've only recently started using it here on YouTube so I can't really tell if it works here but I have tried it on my blog and my website. The best approach is to review a product that you actually use, make it personal, that usually works best, and then just add the links. I have a few blog posts from more than a year ago that are still making me money today. The only downside is that you really need an audience to make it work, so it takes time to get the ball rolling, but after that it's a nice passive income. For me, at this point, it's not a big income stream. I've shifted my focus from the blog and the website to this channel, so I really need to grow my audience here before I can tell you if it works or not. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure that it will work like on the website and the blog. I sell books on Amazon and on my website and again it's a great way to earn a passive income but it will take work before you see that money. 
and you really need to know what you're talking about. Don't just write a book in a week for the sake of writing a book and selling it. It doesn't work like that. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be a pro to write a book about photography. Just like affiliate marketing, make it personal. What's important for you in photography? Your experiences. The market is already so saturated, so don't write another book on the basics of your camera or the exposure triangle, things like that try to be different. It took me around two or three months to write each of my books and after that you also need to keep updating them. And just like selling prints it's all about marketing and promoting, bringing people to your books. That's something a lot of people forget when they do something like this. Lightroom presets. It actually took me a while to create a nice pack, basically a few years because I'm constantly creating new presets for my work. And the ones I'm using right now, I probably won't use them in a year from now because I'm constantly trying to refresh my work. And there's nothing wrong with buying presets, guys. I seriously don't know what the problem is. Just try to learn something when you use them. You know, I've heard people say that you don't learn anything when you use presets, but that's just not true. I've learned a ton of things when I was buying and using presets from other photographers when I was studying photography. The thing is, I didn't just apply them and that's it. What I did was apply the preset, but then I went digging in the settings. I wanted to know how every setting changed the look of the photo. Another thing I did was just reset some settings and see how that changed the photo, or I played around with the settings to see if there were settings that I liked better. You can learn a ton by using presets from other photographers, but you just have to put some effort into it. Don't just apply the preset and then upload a photo to Instagram and never look at it again. That's not how it works. And don't tell me that crap of all photos will look the same if we all use presets. Back in the film days, film did exactly the same. Photographers picked a certain type of film because they liked the colors, the contrast and the characteristics. And nobody would say back then, oh, your photos look exactly the same as that photographer because you use the same type of film. A photograph is a lot more than the type of film you use or what presets you use. And it's also just a nice way to support photographers and filmmakers that you like. So um, <clears throat> maybe if you want to check out my presets, link in the description. Yep. This is what really worked best for me. Now, I'm not doing it anymore because I have way too much work with this channel and I'm also working on some personal photography projects, but I did it while I was traveling full time. I teach photography by writing articles for websites. Now, the same as writing a book, you have to know what you're talking about, but you don't need to be a pro. There are tons of websites and blogs out there that talk about photography and everything related. For me, it came as a surprise because someone came to me and asked me if I could write articles for their website. They read some of my blog posts and they liked it and that's how they found me. So it's definitely easier if you have some kind of writing portfolio, but you can also just approach websites yourself. Just write an article about something that you're specialized in and then pitch it to websites. You probably have to try it a few times, 10 times, 20 times, but once you're in, you're in. And your English doesn't have to be perfect. I know mine isn't, so... Maybe you've heard about these websites, Freelancer and Upwork. You can sign up as a freelancer or as someone who wants to hire a freelancer. And then you can just browse through jobs and the payment and everything else is handled by the platform. Now, I've heard that it works for a lot of people, photographers, designers, writers, but not for me. I find that it actually takes more work to find a job than actually do the job. There are also a lot of people on that website that work for really low prices and I really don't want to undersell my work. And when I did land a job once, after a few days they stopped communicating with me. So no, not for me. I think Patreon has great potential and I did try it once when I was traveling in the beginning and I noticed that when I was focusing on it, people did subscribe, but the problem was that I was doing so many different things at the same time that I kinda let the Patreon page die. And then the people also left of course. But I'm gonna give it another chance because I think Patreon works better with a YouTube channel and not a blog, that was not ideal, so we'll see. Yeah, Airbnb, why not? If you have a spare room that you can rent out and you live in a touristic city, it could be a gold mine. While we were traveling, we stayed in a lot of Airbnbs and for some people it's almost a second income. 
Now, location really matters and also how nice the room is, but if you live in a popular city and you have a spare room, then just go for it. And that's it guys, some of my favorite side hustles to make some extra money. Now before you click away, I'm gonna give you my most important tip and that's don't overdo it. What I mean is just pick one or two of these side hustles to start with. When I was traveling I was doing way too many things and then you can't do them well enough. For things like this to work you really need to focus your energy. So take on one thing in your spare time. And once that's working you can try another thing but don't try them all at the same time. Okay thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.